Hey everybody, today Rado runs through Pocket Imperium, which is a cool little 4x space empire building game that's on Kickstarter right now. And I'm going to be doing a run through today, actually surprisingly, as a three player game, which is something I don't normally do. And the reason for that is because, well, I got to talk a bit about the history of Pocket Imperium. Now, this was originally a print and play game designed and put out by David Mortimer. Anybody could just download it and print it themselves and have a good time playing. And it turned out that it was was so well loved and so well received that it has now been picked up for a full commercial printing by Ludicreations. And as part of that full commercial release, they've expanded the rules so now it can be played with two, three, or four players, where originally the original game could only be played as a three player game. So that's why I'm going to do it. I'm going to do this run through showing you how the original three player game works. You can see it's going to be the green versus the purple versus the red empires there. So that'll be me, Jen, and Tula, our beagle. And if you want to know how the new two-player and four-player variant rules change the game, you can watch the extended playthrough where I'll actually demonstrate what's different with different player counts. But I want to show the main thing off as a three-player game because that's really you know, its core original design. Although, don't get me wrong, it works very, very well with two and four players as well. But I'll demonstrate that in the extended. Okay? Right. Well, let's get going. So what is the situation? Well, um, war has erupted across the Imperium, as is so often the case. And these three individual nations, societies, uh, you know, are basically trying to expand as fast as they can through the galaxy, claiming planets along the way to score points. Now, this game takes place over a series of rounds. In a three or four player game, it goes to eight rounds. That's why I'm just using this eight sided die as a round tracker. With the full game, I believe there's a, there, there's a different way it tracks rounds. Actually, I should say, by the way, everything you're seeing here is prototypes. The game is not going to come with an eight side die. It's going to have a round tracker. The game is not going to be Bruges cards, which is some print and play cards slipped in. It'll have nice, properly well printed cards. It'll have special. Uh, victory point markers that are kind of sci-fi themed with little planets on them. And um, also, the game comes with these tiles, as you can see. And all the tiles are two-sided. Now, I'm showing you the, the basic side, which every single tile has a, a double point planet and two single point planets. But on the other sides of these, with the full release of the game, there are special tiles that you can throw in to mix things up, like asteroid belts and black holes and different configurations of the planets that can actually change things up quite a bit. So, you got to bear in mind, if I, if I had the full release, I could flip some of these tiles and get a radically different situation. But as it is, every time you play, you're going to get a different layout of the galaxy just because of how you put these tiles out. And so I've already set this up. And now, before we get going, each of the... Uh, the the empires has to claim some land. I'm the first player, so I will get to put down two ships and claim land first. And let's see. And now, basically, all these little planets are worth one point. The medium-sized planets are worth two points, and the big super mama here in the center of the galaxy is worth three points. Although you don't score this one until the end of the game. You score all the other ones at at you know at the end of every round over the course of the game. So I think for starters, I'm just going to go on ahead and jump and grab this one that's really close to me because it's worth two points. And I basically I put down two ships. Now I should say another thing: the shipping game. You can go to the Kickstarter page, links in the show notes, and you can see what the real components will look like. They're not just going to be simple wooden discs like this. Actually, the real game is going to come with specially cut ship wooden pieces for every player. That's a different shape and size. So this game is actually very colorblind friendly because even if you you know have a hard time seeing the difference between green and red, you can actually instantly tell the ships apart because they have different designs. It's very, very cool looking. Again, you can go see what that looks like. Bear in mind, I'm using all prototype components here. And just, you know, placeholders I grabbed from other games. So I'm going to grab this planet. And now, let's see, Tula over here, she's going to grab a planet. I think she'll do the same thing as me. She'll start off over here and grab this two-point planet. And now, Jen, she's going to go a little bit different. She's going to jump over here and grab this one-point planet because it's very close to the center of the galaxy there. And now, we, so everybody's, you know, we go in clockwise order, turn order. Everybody grabs a planet. Now, everybody goes in reverse order. So now, Jen gets to grab another one. Let's see. What is she going to do? Um, I think she's going to, you know, she's going to, hmm. 
be a bit aggressive, and she's going to span out. She's going to have her two fleets on the opposite sides of the galaxy. Now Tula takes another one. I think Tula will be just a little bit more um, down to earth. She's just going to try and consolidate herself, and I will... Ooh, now Jen's, I could go on ahead and just jump right here, right next to Jen, and we might have a little bit of a fracas right there at the beginning of the game. We'll see what happens. But okay, so there we go. Everybody has deployed their fleets. We each have two fleets with two ships in it, and now we're ready to start playing. Now, how's the game play? Super duper simple. Over the course of eight rounds, or if you're playing a two-player game, six rounds, but in a three or four, it's eight rounds, what happens is each player has three cards. An expand, an explore, and an exterminate card. These are three of the four X's. The fourth X, exploitation, happens automatically at the end of every round. So everybody's always going to be exploiting the systems they're in, but during a round we will also take, tur take turns expanding, exploring, and exterminating as well. And now what I've got to do, and everybody does this at the same time, simultaneously, I've got to take these three cards and I've got to play them in a certain order. So that we put them like this. So that this will be the first card I play this round. This will be the second card I play this round, and this will be the third card I play this round. And while I'm doing that, Jen is deciding for herself what order she'll play three cards, as is Tula. And so once we've all decided the order we're going to play our cards, then we start revealing them at the same time, and we all do those actions simultaneously. So this game, there's a surprising amount of depth. There's a surprising amount of strategy and planning that goes in to what is, at its heart, an incredibly simple little game. And so I'm going to try and show this now. So let's go on ahead and start playing. Now, I have no idea what uh, Jen and Tula are going to do, but here's my three guys. I've got to decide what order do I want to do these actions. Do I want to expand and then explore and then exterminate. Although, interestingly, I'm starting out right next to Jen. So if I wanted to, I, you know what? I think what the heck? Let's start with a bang. My first action, I'm going to exterminate. After I exterminate, I think then I will expand because maybe I will have lost some ships and I'll need to, um, you know, exterminating means attacking somebody else, destroying their fleets. Expanding means making your fleets bigger. So after I exterminate, I think I'll start to expand. And then after that, the last thing I'm going to do this round is explore. So now that is me. I have basically programmed in the three steps I'm going to do this round. Now while I'm doing that, Jen and Tula are doing the same thing. Let me just take a quick look, see what they're going to do. Let's see. I think Jen will. She will uh, do that, and then that, and that. So Jen has, let's see, did I get this right? E, yeah, yeah, yep. So that's Jen. She's programmed her three orders. And Tula, the beagle, keep an eye on that beagle. She's a smart one. She might beat us all. Let's see, what is she going to do? She will deet, um, deet, deet, deet. All right, there we go. So everybody's done. Everybody has programmed in. They're three specific. We all have the same stuff, and now the round is ready to go. Here we are on the first round, and everybody reveals the first thing we're doing. I'm exterminating. I'm going to war. Jen is exploring. She's very peaceful. And Tula is also exploring. Okay, so now what does that mean? You'll notice... Let's see, I should come back here and look at these cards. Or actually, let's look at the uh, fourth player cards. Here we are. The cards all have a number. Expand is action number one. So, when multiple cards are played, we pay attention to the order on the card to see what happens first. If anybody plays an expand, that's the first thing that's going to happen. Then once all the expansion is done, then anybody who played exploration gets to go. And then finally, anybody who wants to go into war goes last. So, in this case, I'm exterminating. So that means I'm going to go last. Jen and Tula are both exploring. So they're tied. What's the tiebreaker? Whoever's closest to the player marker. So Jen, you know, Tula is closer. So Jen will get to explore. Then, um, I'm sorry, Tula will get to explore. Then Jen will explore. And then finally, I'll get to exterminate. So the, the girls are going to explore. So let's look at an explore card a little bit more closely. Now, all the cards have the same basic structure where they show that if only one person tried to do the action, you get the most benefit. If only one per if Tula was the only one who tried to explore, she would get to do three exploration actions. But as it happens, both Jen and Tula explored. So that means she only gets to do two exploration actions, as does Jen. So Tula is now going to explore twice. Okay, and so how is she going to do that? I think for starters, she will. Um, let's see, what is she? She's red. She's going to pick up this fleet, 
and she is going, and exploring means you can grab a fleet and you can move them one or two spaces. And now this fleet is comprised of two ships. If Tula wants, she can just pick up both ships and go one, two, like that, or she can split it up. Or she can even pick, so she could go one, two, or she could split this fleet up and go one, two. So now she's claimed two different planets. And um, you know, and then if she wanted, she could do some. Or she has two explorers. That could be her first explorer. Her second explorer, if she was feeling like it, could be to pick this one up and go one, grab this fleet, and two, and move it over here. So it's like breathing right down the neck of Jen, let's say. So there's a lot of ways you could do your exploration, depending on how much you want it. Because remember, Tula's explored, but her second or her third action is going to be an extermination. So she wants to be setting herself up so that she can be you know breathing down somebody's neck and and have a big attack too. But I think for starters, she will do her first explore, just go one, two, to grab this planet way over here by herself. And for her second explore, you know what? I think she's gonna go full up peacenik and hopefully nobody's gonna bother her. She's just gonna try and not piss anybody off. She's gonna do her second explore, grabbing one of these two ships from this fleet and go one, two. So basically Tula has spread herself very thin across two medium-sized planets and two small planets. Okay, that was Tula's exploration. Now it is Jen's exploration. She is next because, you know, Jen was furthest away from the first player marker. She gets to do two explorers herself. Now, Jen um, is worried. She can see, uh, as soon as I get my chance, I'm going to exterminate. And right now, uh, I, you know, Jen's looking and seeing that I could easily exterminate her. So I think Jen, for her first of two explorers, is going to pick this guy up and run away and is going to explore right here to the center of the galaxy with her entire fleet. And so that fleet just narrowly escaped being exterminated by my fleet, which was right next to it. Now, the interesting thing is, remember, when you explore, you get to move two spaces unless you move into the center of the galaxy. It's so big here, you can only move one. So, um, you know, Jen gets to go one, and then she has to stop. But as it is now, Jen controls the center of the galaxy. That was her first explore. Now, her second explore, I think, will be to take her other fleet, which was way over here all by itself, a million miles away from anybody, and she's going to go one Two, you know, because she's picking up the entire fleet. Actually, you know what? No, I think she's only going to pick up one fleet. She's going to pick up one of her fleet and move it one. She could move it two spaces, but she's just going to move it here. So now she's got this two-point planet, this one-point planet, and the big three-point planet with two of her ships. So Jen is done with her exploration, and now it is time to exterminate, exterminate. That's what I'm going to do. And now here's the interesting thing. Since I am the only person who chose to exterminate in this first phase, I get to do three extermination actions because I'm all by myself. Nobody else did it. Now, an exterminate action is kind of like an exploration action in that it's a way to move your ships around. But exploration, you, you get to move up to two spaces, but you can never move into a space where somebody else is. Extermination, you only get to move one space, and it always has to be into a planet. So, I've got three exterminate actions I can do. Although, actually, right now, because Jen ran our way, I'm not going to get to actually attack any of her ships, but I'm going to do it anyway. Uh, first of all, I'm going to take this fleet, and I could just move the entire fleet from this planet to this planet to exterminate, because even if nobody's here, you can still move into a planet, or they're actually called systems. You can still move into a system and, a, and a trigger an extermination. I'm just going to move one ship here and exterminate. All right, that was my first exterminate action. And now this ship cannot be involved in any further exterminations. Now I've got another, or I've got two more extermination actions I could do. I'm going to pick this one up and I'm going to exterminate over here. So as you can see, I've ended up spreading around as well. And now I've got a third exterminate action, but unfortunately, the, I mean, and I'd like to move in here. I'd like to exterminate here into the middle of the galaxy, but I can't do it because my two ships that are adjacent, they can't move anymore. Um, so these two ships could still exterminate, but they've got no place to exterminate to because the extermination action requires... What you do when you exterminate, you pick a planet that you want to exterminate, and then you move any adjacent ships you want into there. So my first exterminate was, I picked this planet, and I could have moved two, but I only moved one. And then my second exterminate was, I picked this planet, and I moved one in here. Now for my third exterminate, well, I can't pick this because this ship can't go any further. This ship is too far away. So actually, my third exterminate was wasted. I can't do anything more. But at the end of all that, I've spread around. Okay, now that was the first of the three, or the three phases in this first round. So all our cards went away, and now we reveal what the second action is going to be. I am expanding. Tula 
is expanding and Jen is expanding. Everybody's expanding. Okay. Now what that means is if you look at an expansion, now first of all, expand is the first action. And so we're all going to do expand at the same time, but it'll be go in turn order. So it'll be me, then Tula, then Jen. And because everybody expanded, all, all three of us engaged in it, we get the weakest possible expansion we can, which is we only get to add one ship to our existing fleets. Now you can only add a ship to a fleet that's in a system. So I could add my ship to any of these fleets. I'll go on ahead and add it to this one because this one's surrounded by Jen who could bump out and also Tula's fairly close. Now Jen gets to add one ship to, or Tula gets to add one ship to one fleet. She'll go on ahead and bulk up this guy who is on her two point planet because it's kind of close to me. Although now Tula knows I've already exterminated. I can't get to her, but she'll go on ahead and bulk that one up anyway. And now Jen, she gets to bulk up as well. And I believe she will bulk up, oops, she'll bulk up here in the center of the galaxy. She's uh, sitting very nice, very pretty. All right, so that's it. We all expanded, and since we all did at the same time, it was the weakest one possible. And now we all get to do our final action and we reveal. Of course, now, when you reveal the second one, you know what the last one's going to be through process of elimination. The last one is exploring for me, exterminating for Jen, and exterminating for Tula. Okay. And explores happen before exterminations, so I get to go first. And now I get to move my ships around. And I gotta be worried because I got Jen and Tula both sitting ready to do some nasty extermination. But now here's the interesting thing. Tula, remember, an extermination means you have to pick a planet you're close to and then move into that planet. You know what? Actually, I think Tula, she would have chosen to bulk up this planet instead. That's the planet Tula expanded into. So now, here's the thing. I can look and see that Tula is not next to any of my plants. So she cannot expand or exterminate and take out any of my ships. But Jen can. Jen's little fleet here in the center of the galaxy is right next to two of my fleets. So I got to worry about both of those fleets. So, um, I, you know, because Jen, she's going to exterminate and she could move some of these out and wipe me out if she wants to not that she necessarily will do it so but before that happens i can explore and since i'm the only one exploring i can do three exploration actions so i think what i'm going to do is for starters i will ex this guy will explore from here to here and now it's safe jen cannot exterm she could exterminate and get this planet but she can't get my ship and i have just moved from a single point planet to a double point planet so that's not bad and now this ship cannot move anymore it cannot be involved in any more exploration so these other th fleets can move as well but now remember an exploration cannot move into a space where there's other players so what am i going to do let's see here um what I'd really like to do is get some ships over here into Jen's planet on the far side of the galaxy, but that's way too far to go. It'll take me forever to get there. I am worried about these ships, Jen moving in and just trying to wipe out my ships right here, so maybe I want to explore with them. Yeah, I think I will. I think, I think, I think, I think I'm going to protect myself from Jen. Ooh, well, oh, so many options. I could go on ahead. Yeah, I have three explorers, right? Okay, so my first explorer was I moved over here to move in on this two. My second explorer is I'll pick up one of these ships and I'll move over here to reclaim the planet I had left. And then for my third one, I'll pick this guy up and go one, two, and move over here into Tula's galaxy. All right, and so I've spread myself out pretty far. And I've also now, Tula, she wasn't planning on exterminating, but now she could potentially exterminate me if she wants to. She's gonna have a choice, but we'll see what happens. That's it, I'm done. I've done all three of my explore actions. Okay, and I'm really nervous about Jen coming and hitting me there, but we'll see what happens. Now, moving on to Tula. She gets to do exterminations. Because these both happened, Tula and Jen both get to do two extermination actions. I know one of them is going to be to pick up one from here and move over here. So she's exterminating into that galaxy. And so she has now claimed another planet. She gets one more exterminate if she wants. And I think she's going to do it. She is going to pick up this ship and move um, exterminate. You know, oh, but remember, oh, that's the problem. See, me moving my ship over here, I moved it into empty space. You can never launch an extermination move into empty space. So by moving here, I've actually made my ship safe. 
No one can exterminate into empty space because it's so big and wide, nobody can find my fleet. If, you know, I, if, if I had stayed on a planet, this could be a sitting duck. It could be hit. But because I moved it over here, it's safe. So Tula cannot explo uh, you know, exterminate into that area. And in fact, Tula doesn't have any more um, systems she could exterminate into. So Tula's done. She just exterminated there. And now Jen, she gets two exterminations also. Let's see here. Now, I don't think there's any reason to mess with these ones. This one could exterminate here, and then this one could exterminate here if she wants, but she's happy to leave those where they are. But I think she's going to exterminate outwards. She's going to exterminate. She has two exterminates. One is going to move back here into this planet. You know, she started out here, and now she's, come, she's returned. And she's going to move one here. And, um, you know, because you can exterminate into a system, into this one point system. And now, whenever ships during an exterminate action but bump heads, it's equal losses. So Jen lost one, I lost one. And there we go. So that was it. Jen's done her exterminate. Um, Tula has done hers. And now we are at the end of the first of eight rounds. Now we get into exploiting. And what that means is we have to take a quick look at the galaxy and see if we're going to lose any ships because they don't have enough resources, because they need to exploit the resources where they are. And the way that works, if I have a ship, well, actually, I have a ship out here in empty space. Empty space can only hold one ship. So if I had moved two ships over here, um, you know, because maybe I was trying to hide them and keep them safe so they couldn't be attacked because they're out in empty space. Empty space could only support one. So one would be lost now anyway because there's no resources to exploit. So empty space can only hold one. A, a, um, a one-point planet can hold two ships. A two-point planet can hold three ships. And this three-point planet in the center of the galaxy can hold four ships. Now as it happens, there are no double ships anywhere, so everything's fine. Nobody's gonna, everybody exploits their local resources. Nobody loses any ships. And now, at the end of the round, we score. And we start with me. I'm the first player. So first, I'm going to score. And what I get to do is I get to pick any one of these seven tiles, and only one of them, and everybody on that tile scores. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick this tile because I am all alone in this tile. Nobody else is here. No, actually, you know what? When Jen moved from here to here, I think she moved over here. She moved into my galaxy, not back into her own. She moved over there. Right. That was a smarter move. Okay. So that has created a, si a sticky situation for me. I can now explore, uh, you know, score this galaxy. I'll score three points, but Jen will score one. Now, alternatively, I could score this galaxy, and I'll get two points, and nobody else gets anything. Hmm. Da, 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 da. Yeah. And you know what? I think that's what I'm going to do. I am going to score this one, and that means I get two points. And so, um, in the, you know, for us, we're just using white tokens or ones. These are five. So I just scored two points, and nobody else gets anything in this galaxy. Now we move on. Tula is the next player in turn order. She gets to score a galaxy. And now she could score this one, which would get her one, two, three points, or she could score this one, which would get her four points. Um, and I don't get anything because I'm not, so she'll score this one and score four points. One, two, three, four. So Tula's in the lead just by staying off by herself and not making any trouble. And now Jen, she gets to pick one as well. She'll pick this one over here, which is worth three points. One, two, three. So, so far, I've got two points, Jen's got three, and Tula's got four. But now, there's one more thing. When we're at the end of a round and we're scoring um, the individual sectors we're in, the, you know, these tiles, Everybody gets to pick one, and then whoever is in the center, whoever owns the center, which is Jen, gets to pick another one. And now the only, so Jen gets to pick any of these outer ones, except she can't pick the same one again. She can't do this one for another three points. So she's got to pick somewhere else. And I think Jen is going to come over here and she'll pick this one. Because, you know, if she picks any place else, she won't get any points. Here, at least, she'll get one point. But look what happened. I got three points. One, two, three. And so that is why when I was picking one, I didn't pick this one to score. I picked this one because I figured Jen was going to pick this one and I would get to score off of it. And so now at the end of the round, I've got five points. Tula's and Jen both have four. And we move on to round two. Tula becomes the first player, and we take our three cards, and once again, we do the exact same thing. In secret, we program the order that we're going to do our actions, and then we reveal them one at a time, and continue to expand, explore, exploit, 
and exterminate until all eight rounds are over. And um, now the interesting thing is, at the end of the game, after all eight rounds are over and we've scored the last time, we do one final scoring where every single planet, including the planet at the center of the galaxy, scores. So over the course of the game, you're always trying to maneuver yourself because you know that you know when you want to when you when you go for this exterminate you want to be in a situation where you can make good advantage of it but you got to be worried about if you know if I've revealed my exterminate but Tula hasn't revealed hers yet Tula might be able to strike back. So, when I do my expand, do I expand myself in a place where I'm weak against Tula because there's multiple fronts going on here? You know, or do I say to heck with it? I don't think Tula's going to expand. If Tula ex ex um, uses her extermination, she's just going to expand further on and she's going to move away from me because she's working. There's short-term goals of trying to make sure you've got yourself in, in, a, in a sector where you get to score four points. Like, um, or where you get to score, like Tula gets to score four points here when she scores this. And currently, nobody else gets anything because she controls that. But Tula also wants to be have some points in all the other ones so that when other people trigger these other tiles, she has a chance to score points again. But you also want to be spread all over the galaxy so at the end of the game, you could score a lot of points. But the further you spread out, the weaker you are and the more likely you are to be exterminated. So you're thinking about that, but you're also always trying to figure out, well, if I can expand when nobody else does it, I get to add three ships to the board. Whereas if, I, if everybody expands at the same time, I only get to expand one. So you always want to, wherever possible, be doing actions when no one else is doing them. And then that becomes this almost kind of bluffing, getting into the minds of your opponents. Well, okay, I know they're low on ships. They need to expand. They're probably going to expand first. But they know I know that. So maybe they won't expand first, um, you know, or, but maybe they will. And that means maybe I should expand then too because I've got enough ships and I don't want them to get a lot of ships, etc., etc. So you run into a lot of in this simple tiny little game with just three orders every round you run into a very big wealth of tactical options but that's the basics of the game I've just shown you the first of eight rounds but you know hopefully you've seen how all the actions work how ex ex expansion exploration explo extermination and exploitation work and how we score now, if you'd like, you can hit the button that's on screen and go to the extended playthrough where I will demonstrate another round that shows how the two-player game works, How because it's a little bit different, and I'll also explain how the four-player game works so you get an idea of everything you're getting. Or alternatively, you can hit the other button and go straight to Final Thoughts. Your choice in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0.